What if you had to choose Tim's or Uggs? Which you going? Come on, is that a question, bro? Yo, we Tim six inches all day, bro. Facts. Yankees or Mets? I think Don't I know do your it. answer. No. Oh, oh, oh let's go, Yankees. Oh. Best girl from the Bronx, J Lo or Cardi B? Say, listen, I'm a Gen Xer from New York. I'm always gonna say J Lo. Yo, my man, Tavon's from my hood, bro. I gotta say Tavon, bro. That's what I'm saying. A bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup, and mayo. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you already know, bro. Come on. Welcome to the 17th episode of the City Boys Show. I'm Javier. We got Danny. We got Buzz. What's going on, guys? Big win we just got. Oh, wow. That was that. It's so nice to come off of a, a Red Bull win. I mean, the fact that we had to go to Jersey I and know. get that win, it was worth it. It was, it was totally <laughs> worth it. Was it was so good. <laughs> but let, let's, let's talk about what we're going to talk about this day. We're going to talk about the big derby win against the Red Bulls. We have a special guest with you guys for you, for you guys today. Uh, I'm going to actually put him on right now. We got Felix from the Third Rail. What is going on, Felix? Welcome, yeah. Felix. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get more Bronx, uh, Bronx than that. If, if anybody doesn't know who Felix is, he is the president of the Third Bro uh, Rail Bronx. Um, introduce yourself a little. I I'll give you the floor for a sec. Um, what else can I say? Um, you, you, I think you did a very good job of introducing me. Um, I'm Felix. If y'all don't know me, um, I'm president of um, the Bronx chapter of the Third Rail. Um, I've been a Third Rail member since 2018. I've been a season ticket holder for just as long. Um, and what else can I say about me? But I do it for the badge, and I do it for the love <laughs> nice. of my borough. I do it for the love of my city, and. Um, yeah, we the fucking champs. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't ask for a better first guest, man. Yeah, this is exciting. Well, this has been in the progress uh, process for like yeah, six weeks. Yeah, yeah facts. Like, like we've been, we've been talking about this for a while. I think we. I think the, yeah. uh, the first time we spoke about it was at City Field. Yeah, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, we were at City yeah. Field. I'm like, yo, I, I'd love to be on, and we've been going back and forth. I've been like, yo, Buzz was good. And then Buzz kind of dug me for a second. He was like, yo, what? we got to get everything going. We got to make sure everything's right. Uh, Javi, you know, and then, then he put, you know, threw Javi out on the bus, said, I got to get everything set up. So I was like, ah, right, you know what? Let, you know, these guys are going to take care of it. You guys have been, you know, creating some great content in the meantime. And, you know, this, you know, this is something I'm really excited about doing. So let's get it going. And let's get it going. It. Um, so so let me so let's talk about the atmosphere at uh, Red Bull. So you, I, I felt like we heard you guys all game long from the press yeah. box. Uh, yeah. Tell me how yeah. it was out there. Well, you you guys already know we went there. We reduced numbers, and we went in with about 250 people. I mean, you know, it was, our ticket allocation was lowered. Obviously, you guys know why because of the sanctions we were dealing with. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, you know, sanctions, no sanctions. That's not going to shut us up. We were loud. We were crazy as usual. And, you know, we let them know that New York is definitely blue. Um, yeah, that, that, it, yeah, that atmosphere was crazy, man. It, it yeah. was insane to see. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I loved it. You guys, uh, I forgot when it was. I think second Trash half, people. you started with the lights. Yeah. <laughs> you remember the lights on the fo on the phones? You did that? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, who, who started that? Um, you know something? It was just something that we did organically at Belsen. Um, it was for US for the uh, first US Open Cup match. We, uh, you know, I forgot who it was. I think it was maybe uh, uh, Norman or, or Jordi. Some, you know, someone shouted out. You know, pull your phones out, put your flashlight on, and we just started doing it from then. Um, and after the Uvalde school shooting, you know, that same night we had a, we had a match, and we all did it for like 80 minutes. You know, in the 80th minute. Oh, that's nice. that's and good. you know, we pulled it out again tonight because you know we said to ourselves, any evening match that we have, and it's the 85th minute, we're gonna pull it out. So, you know, we did have the flashlights on. I like the end. What was great about this game? We were, me and Javi, we went last game. We actually sat near you. Um, yeah. The first Red Bull game. Um, again, again, what was it, the U.S. Open, right? Yeah, the U.S. Open. Yeah, U.S. Open. Yeah. Much different atmosphere, much different ending too, which we'll get into. But yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I'm glad we bounced Wait, back. We got to show it off. We got to show it off. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so let's talk about that Tati goal. So that was oh, a big yeah. one. I know a lot of Tati news. How was it in the crowd with the Tati score? Um. It was. It was definitely a, a great moment because of the fact that you know we had we we were pressing. You know during that little time period, I believe from like the 60th minute on, we were we were really pressing and going for that goal. So. Um, as soon as you saw the, you know, the ball come off um, uh, Santi's foot, I don't know, just something about that ball, the way he just put it right on Tati's boot, 
Oh, Once yeah. I saw it go in, the crowd was bananas. I remember I grabbed my wife. Shout out to Evie, right? I grabbed her <laughs> and I was just shaking her. And I think there's some footage on it. You, you can catch it on the on the broadcast. I'm like shaking her really hard. I'm like, we did it. He was scoring. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't won in Rebel since Lord knows when. So yeah. you know, I'm going crazy. And you know, just the fact that we're you know it's a derby and we you know we were beating the Rebels. I mean that that was enough for me. So I and and it, it was just electric you know beer being thrown thankfully not in anybody in particular but you know water <laughs> being splashed i mean i got another shower and you know i got beer all over my kid and you know it, all i can say is is that it was an electric atmosphere after that he had scored that goal uh, uh, according to records it was like their first sold out game in like years wow. that's insane uh, even though it did look a little uh there was some <laughs> I don't know how sold out it yeah, was. I saw, I saw it was Listen, sold out. They can't get a good crowd right. for a game against us. Come on, that's the derby. They don't. They, their fans just don't care. They, they have the worst fan base ever. Sorry, can't relate. <laughs> the worst. So, Felix, <laughs> we were we were sitting in the media section, right? And I got to tell you, uh, how did you feel that first half? I mean, I was scared. That first half, we looked on the back foot. They were attacking. They were pressing us. We were yeah. turning over that ball. Um, I, you know, the rebels did have a good press against us. They really started that press. Like if you're looking from the fifth minute to maybe the 35th, 36th minute, you know, they, the, the rebels were pressing high, but they were starting to get tired. Um, yeah. I felt like the tactical, the tactical mix that, uh, the, that Cushing, you know, put up for this week, you know, it worked. We saw the same tactics against Dallas and, you know, he, he, he went to the same, he went to the same well for this game. I feel like that change, that adjustment was, was beneficial. Uh, once we got into our groove and that started happening at least, you know, from like the 40th minute on from like the 40th to the 60th minute, we really settled into that formation. He made some good substitutions and all that buildup led up to, you know, our goal. I think in the first half, Red Bulls were really, you know, you already know when you're playing the Rebels in that first half, if they don't score on you in the first half, you have a chance to beat them because yeah. they will they will they will pin you back to your to your 18. And, and you know, you'll have to play bodies behind them. But. I feel like, you know, now that Nick Cushing has a better idea of the personnel that he has on his team, he employed a different tactic, and that's what led to that success. Yeah, Nick Nick Cushing actually gave some love to the supporter. Let me play this out, because yeah, yeah, I want to I want to awesome. hear it. We wanted a win for the supporters because they came here and supported us, and, you know, they were the supporters. Our away support in Portland last year when we won, and, you know, they're, they're incredible, and, and they give us so much support and so much spirit. But we wanted to put a performance on for them today as well because we wanted them to come – and not only win, but see what the team that they support and why they love us. And we feel like we gave them a little bit back today, but for sure they gave us far more than we've ever gave them. So we will continue to push. We will continue to try and get wins on the board and continue to play attacking football that they that they really love to enjoy to watch. Yeah. So so how does it feel when you hear your the head coach or the interim head coach like give love to the supporters? It's not like an everyday thing, but it's good to see like that he's going out of his way to talk about the supporters. Yeah, you know something? I mean, it feels really special because he knows that we're there each and every match. Rain, shine, cold, hot, we're out there. <laughs> That's all I got to yeah. say. And, um, I know that, um, you know, there were a couple things that, you know, a couple of health situations I was going through last year that kept me away from, you know, being a support, active supporter. But, you know, including myself going to Portland and, and you know, that entire playoff run, which is amazing, by the way. You know, it really did a lot to, to – you know, helped me get better and, and it helped me heal a lot. And, um, you know, just to have him say that was, it really touched my heart because of the fact that, you know, I give a lot of myself to this club and, and, you know, everybody knows, everybody who knows me knows that I love this club and, you know, and to, to have the gaffer say that about us, it was, you know, that's the reason why we go so hard the way we do because yeah. we yeah. want them to know that we have their back, you know? Yeah, I, I really like the fact that he did do that. I mean, that is your team right there. Without the fans and the supporter club, I mean, that's why Nick's my favorite NYCFC coach. Uh, <laughs> this guy is bandwagon right now. It's funny. I got a really great story about Nick Cushing in Portland. If I, if oh, you guys okay. could indulge me, so you know, I don't. I mean, were you guys in Portland, right? You guys were out there, right? Uh, no, we were in Hammerstein. Oh, we were okay, guys. Oh, that's right. You guys were at the Hammerstein. So let me just tell you, right? So. At the Hyatt Hotel, you know, that's where the great, that big party was at. Have you seen video of it? Yeah, yeah, Everyone, yeah. We're downstairs. So um, there was this big ballroom that they have. That this, they escorted us into the ballroom. We, we you know, seats, they, you know, the clubs are food, drinks, all that kind of stuff, right? So I see um, Nick Cushing and I see this guy, Matt Goodman, when he was with the club. 
they were there. And, you know, me and Matt Goodman, we had a good relationship while he was with, with NYC. And so um, I go to, you know, I go to Matt. I'm like, yo, can I get the mic? I, I was I was feeling nice. You know, I, my team just finished <laughs> one of the cup. It, you know, it was it was a great moment. So, I, you know, I, I go to Matt, you know, and, and Nick Cushing is right there face to face. And I'm like, can I have the mic? Matt Goodman goes, this man gets the mic. <laughs> so I get up and I stood up on this rickety chair. I mean, I, I, I forgot who helped me up to this chair. Anyway, so I started going off. I'm like, let's go NYC. Yeah, we won we the chance. We won the cup. Yo, it's me out here, Portland. Yo, it's crazy. Y'all doing the whole thing, right? And I just remember everyone just started getting crazy. And not only that, I bought up half the team on that chair, including Tati, oh, Ebert, so James cool. Sands with the bing bong. Yeah. You know, and all these guys just had their moment on the mic, and it was just a great fan moment. So definitely, that, that's, that's so awesome. That's, that's awesome. such a cool story. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, we have stories to share after this championship this hey, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah like listen, it. listen, we're looking good right now. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Let's not say anything else but that we're looking good right now. <laughs> a last thing we gotta talk about, and unfortunately, I don't want to talk about it, but the sanctions that were put on the third rail and and right. the supporter section, Los Templados. Um. What do you make of those sanctions and how do we move forward and not have that happen again? Because it um, sucks going to these games and not hearing yeah. those drums. Yeah. Like, yeah, we love those drums. It's, it's, it's something that's the heartbeat of, of, of our supporter section. Um, guys, um, I'm a bit older than I look, obviously. And <laughs> I'm, I'm very big. Um, I was raised very, um, very much on the values of accountability. And um, we, had some, we had some unfortunate incidents at Red Bull. Um, and we were held accountable for these actions. You understand? Yeah. So um, the club has sanctioned us. I'm not in love with the sanctions at all, but at the end of the day, they had to do what they had to do because of certain actions by certain individuals. Um, if they have to hold us you know, accountable as a supporter section, then so be it. This is how they see us, that we're one unit, not several different groups. Um, as far as moving ahead and, and really, you know, how do we move ahead from this? I think that everyone has, does have to take that accountability. We have to be able to say, no matter if you're third rail, Templado, Ultra, City Boy, whatever, you know, Chile yeah. gang, I don't, I don't care who you are. You know, we all support the team together. We should be able to police each other and say, hey, that's not cool. Or, you know, kind of how we did on Sunday. You know, and so, you know, this past Sunday, there were no major incidents involved, you know, at all. Yeah. And to be honest with you, that's how it should be each and every time we go out there. Now, whether or not the Rebels, you know, think that we should get more tickets for, you know, for future games is up to them. But we have to, you know, take, you know, keep in mind that we are adults. A lot of most of us are adults and we should be able to, you know, be accountable to our actions. And therefore, we should have our actions, you know, be dictated by common sense and not, you know, you know, spur the moment emotion which i can be guilty of sometimes but you know that no definitely yeah you know i'm not saying i'm the perfect supporter or anything i know my faults and i know you know that you know i i also do get in people's faces and i will let them know that your team sucked all day but <laughs> i also no, know that like, with yeah, those actions comes some passion. sort of accountability you understand yeah, yeah. exactly I, I mean i'm okay with some type of sanction i, I agree maybe the limiting of the tickets but the draw, yeah. I, I mean, I feel like it hurts the team. Yeah, the yeah. and, and that, was, yeah. that was a sentiment. And, and to be honest with you, I, you know, when I was speaking with a couple of people, that was a sentiment that was repeated, that this hurts the team because of the fact that they're used to having us with our drums. Now, I always feel, I mean, guys, I'm South American, so I got a huge voice, yeah. right? So I know when I'm in a soccer environment, I got to be loud. My voice isn't going to be stopped by nobody. I don't yeah. care if I have the drums. Listen. I go 90 minutes as much as I can. You know, it's not going to be a matter of having our drums. Our drums are there and they're essential. But yeah. to me, it's, you know, that's, that's something that I had to agree with. It was like, it was, it's more hurting the club and the players rather than us. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I think yeah. that's just a testament to the passion of the fans in in right. the third rail and Los Templados and all those supporter groups because you guys were so loud with their and at Red Bull without the drums. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you guys no. compensated for those drums and were still just as loud. And what's crazy was that their supporter section was packed. They yeah. try to be just as loud, and I could yeah. hear yeah. our supporters. Yeah. Oh, and their chants are hot trash. Oh, like, oh, oh no, they're garbage. Trash. Oh no, 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 they <laughs> are garbage. <laughs> You know, I mean, All I right. mean, listen, listen. We we got it. We got better songs. Our songs are actually in Spanish. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Come on, listen. You know, you can't mess with that. 
They don't speak Spanish in New Jersey. That's the problem. <laughs> Not well, well, they should. I mean, all that's what that's what all the second the second generation immigrants they all went to Jersey. Yeah, that's yeah, true. that's true. <laughs> all right, all right, but let's let's have some fun now. All let's right, play a little let's game because you're on the show. This is gonna be a let's go. <laughs> it's gonna be like rapid fire. Uh, gotcha. question, uh, it's gonna be two choices, and then you choose why you chose it. All right, so we'll okay, gotcha. Little- you all right so what if you had to choose tins or uggs which come on is that a question oh. bro yo we tin six inches all day bro Fact. all right all right let's let's add to this all right yankees or mets i think don't I know do your it answer. no oh, oh, oh let's go yankees oh, Bronx all day her day I'll yeah like oh, okay. you know what i mean Sky. This guy. Okay, if who reps the Bronx more, Jesus and Merrill or AOC? Okay, so we got a bit of a thing here, right? Uh-huh. So, <laughs> Jesus and Merrill broke up yesterday. I know is, the breakup is harsh. It's it's harsh, right? Now AOC represents my district. Oh, so you got a little love for AOC? Hey, listen, that's my congresswoman right there. You know, I, I, <laughs> hey, this is a hard one. Hey, Diz and Mero, AOC, I mean, they're on the same level. I mean, can I pick, can I choose me? Hey, wow, okay. You're repping the Bronx hard. All right, all right, all right. We'll Always give you that. Me. You know I, what? I do, I'll give I do you rep a, the Bronx hard, bro. I'll give you a, li- a little right answer for that. A little clap, <laughs> right, a little clap. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Best oh. girl from the Bronx, J-Lo or Cardi B? And don't okay. let your wife murder you. Okay, this is, listen, <laughs> this is my the last one on earth. Listen, listen. I'm a Gen Xer from New York. I'm always going to say J-Lo. Hey, yeah, okay, okay. Cardi B, okay, I can't okay. understand okay. her half the time. So you know what? I got to go with J-Lo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Our two New York players, Tavon and Hack. Who you got as your favorite? I think. Yo, I Tavon. Yo, my man. Tavon's from my hood, bro. I gotta say Tavon, uh, that's bro. That's what I'm saying. All He's from my hood. Hard. He's from Gun Hill, bro. I gotta say <laughs> something. You know what I mean? He know. He knows what's up. He knows Allerton's uh, always in the building. <laughs> but I respect that uh, Hack actually takes the subway, though, right? Yo, I yeah, saw no, Hack does. on the L train. He's definitely from Brooklyn. <laughs> nah, and he, I was like, damn, no car service for him? Nothing, bro. Nah, he's a, he's a Brooklyn kid. He's not scared. Brooklyn kid's yeah, not taking it. Good. Yeah, I agree. Okay, 4 train or D train? <laughs> what we got here, bro? Mm, okay, so here, here's the thing, right? So I don't live near either train line. I actually live over by the 2 train, right? Oh, wow. So that means I got to take the BX26 to get to the stadium. Now, I'm a big scenery guy, right? Yeah. I love how when you, you know, you approach 161st Street on the 4 train and you get the old, the new Yankee Stadium oh, right yeah. before you hit the train station. Before, when the stadium was on the other side of 161st Street, you get it uptown. Um, when you, you know, when you come in, yeah, you yeah, see out yeah. the tunnel, you see the old Yankee Stadium. So the D train, I mean, the D train doesn't do it for me. It's on the ground. I don't get no scenery, <laughs> so I gotta go for the four, baby. Let's go. Uh, right. I like it. That's so, what I'm talking so about. So we determined Felix doesn't like the D. <laughs> uh, not, not, not a person to take that D. <laughs> All right, we accept that. All right, if I gave you this acronym, what does this mean? My man, Come you on. already know the Breakfast of Champions right there, bacon, egg, and cheese, fam. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I respect it. I respect it. Okay. All right. If I said this though, what you got? My man, you got a bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup, and mayo. Let's go. You're, <laughs> you already know, bro. Come on. Listen. <laughs> like I said, breakfast of champions right there. Breakfast of champions for sure. Felix, it Felix, was great it was having, having you on the you show, buddy. bro. Thank Yo, you. Yo, can I get some shout outs? I want to, you know, real quick. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. Please, you please, have of course, of course. I'm going to shout out all the supporter groups in our supporter section, guys. You bring it hard every, every, every game. Um, shout out to the third rail, Templados. I don't got to name no names. Y'all already know. And um, definitely, it was a pleasure to be here. Guys, keep nothing but success in the future. Felix, yeah, who's you. your favorite podcast, Felix? <laughs> hey, bro, you how you make, on listen, listen. No, no, no. All the, all the podcasts in, the, in our NYCOC, NYCFC ecosystem are great. They all have a great, great purpose. But you guys are definitely up there. I definitely do listen. No, facts. I definitely do listen each and every week, man. You know, so you guys are doing great stuff, man. Keep it up. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate the love, yo. Later. All right. Thanks for Peace, y'all. Take care. Have a great one. Later. Peace.
Yo, bro, why are you trying to get us in trouble with other podcasts, man? <laughs> I don't know. Why are you, why are you starring thing, competitions guys? over here? We're Come here. On, we're bro. the Paluminati, man. We're supposed to be I on know. the same page. Oh, I just wanted to know Felix's opinion. Jeez, oh, my God. Yes. Bro, where's the old person? Danny? <laughs> I wanted to fight random people for no reason, bro. <laughs> that's a past life. Now we're a past life all of a sudden. That was one year. That was less than a year ago. All right, but we got to get into this Tati news. Um, so this is kind of how it all played out. Let's let's set the scene for people. First, after the game, that for after the game, Tati was giving some long embraced hugs. Yes, <laughs> but we saw he also some... had his own. Rec- he was also. I'm sorry, cut you off. Maybe you were gonna say this, but he had like his own camera man. He looked like he was talking to, like he was making a goodbye video. Over yeah, there. It, it was something there. But we, but before that, Nick Cushing subbed him out and he put Hebed in, and I and. Uh, Trey from Blue Balls noticed this, and he's like, hey, he usually doesn't do that. Usually he'll leave both of them out. So there was a question asked, uh, what was the reasoning for taking out uh, Valentin Castellanos? And this is what um, Nick Cushion had to say. Tati just felt a little bit of, a little bit of pain, so he came off. He, he, he asked to be subbed off, and Tati doesn't ask to be subbed off. So in the moment when he says, you know, for the team, I think I need to come because I'm feeling pain, we take him, we put Heather on. So it, it's, it's, not, um, it's not serious. He'll, he'll be available for Miami, but in this game, it was... Good to get fresh legs on. So, so you think that's it? Okay, maybe he did just have an injury. I mean, it was weird that he was hugging everybody very intensely. Yeah. I, he had like, I think he almost cried too at one point after the game. It did look like it. Um, as we're in the press conference, uh, there was news that came out from uh, Glenn Crooks, and he says. What a finish to NYCFC's career, Tati Castellano with the game winner. And although nothing official, the late substitution and hugs his salute to his supporters said it all. It's been a pleasure. So basically he was saying like, yeah, I think he's gone after this. Yeah. Um, but nothing was confirmed at that time. Uh, and then so the day happens, uh, next day comes, and then we get this news from... Uh, I'm just going to say his name wrong because I do this all the time. Fabrizio Romano. Oh, the Italian Ooh, there we go. here. <laughs> Italian. And Tati Cassianos is expected to join City Group side Girona. Is that how I say it? Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's I, uh, oh. Hirona. Oh, Hirona. You Hirona. love like making yeah. G's H's and like, oh, it's, so uh, fancy. it's La Liga. It's in Spain, <laughs> bro. It's Very Spanish. Point. Girona. I, Jesus. Yeah. So very soon, final details will be discussed in the next days. MLS uh, star appeared to leave New York in an order to try new La Liga experience. So what do you guys, uh, what was your reaction to all this? Uh, complete sadness. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for him, but also sad for us, right? Like, I think it's well-deserved. I think, I don't think Hirona is like, right, a gigantuous, in my opinion, no, a gigantuous stub over NYCFC, um, right? They've been, they spent 20, they've been on a yo-yo club, right? They've, they've 2017, 2019, they were uh, one of the top flight team. Uh, but then they were put in a second division for a couple seasons, and now they're back to being promoted. So they're there, but they're playing, you know, uh, Atletico, right? They're playing Barcelona. They're real. playing real teams. Yeah. Um, so, not real teams. I, I'm not trying to disrespect MLS. But they're <laughs> they're playing a different level of teams. La Liga is yeah. considered one of the top five leagues. Absolutely. And I think he can get that exposure that he's been looking for. My understanding is that because he's staying within – the city football group because Hirona is also owned by CFG um, that it might be like a loan for a year. So then they could increase his value and then sell him to another team. So uh, sad. He's leaving really excited for him. I think it's really cool. What I understand is that he's going to play for inter Miami and that'll be his going away. I mean, think about it. You're going to get the ring that day. You're going to play your last game at Yankee stadium. Hopefully we whoop them. And then you go off to your merry way in Europe. I, that, I, that thing must be living, you know, cloud nine right now. Yeah, but I'm devastated. <laughs> All right. I really, I, I mean, I am happy for him. I think he's done a great job for the team. Okay. He's without him. I don't think, you know, we are where we are today, this season. And we're certainly, I, I don't think we win it last year without him too. Um, with all that being said, it's great. I really hope he shines. Um, some of my experiences, look at some of the stars or young stars from MLS. They go to other leagues and they don't even play. I don't think that they're going to do that with him. I think Tati has that potential to like be a superstar. Um, I'm just afraid of our team without him. And um, I did get a feeling that it was more than the injury. Yeah. You know, it was yeah, weird. Just the way he was embracing people, the way he, I think he hugged Brad Sims after the game, I mm-hmm. believe it was. Um, yeah, it just felt different. This one felt different. And uh, 
I, I guess the bigger question is, who, I, I, did you want to say something before? I... Well, and not only that, but it was really interesting. Some reporter asked him after the game, like, how is it amazing to have Dati? And uh, coach's answer was, it's great to have Dati. But Hebe is right behind oh, yeah. him, and he's playing really well, too. Yeah, and Nick, so I think Nick that definitely was... emphasized. Like, I think it was like the giving of the torch, basically. Yeah. And I, I guess that's where it leads to my next question. Is Hebed the next Tati in our lineup? Is he our is he our striker or do we have Talis or what do we think? Camera can't... one because we only have one camera. <laughs> please, please just give Hebed a chance. I'm seeing I'm seeing everything in the tw- in Twitter world, the 17 group chats that we're in for on the the City Boys. Everyone wants us to pick up a new striker. Give Hebed a chance. He's a beast. Since the past few games, he's been playing really well. I think you forget that Hebe was a monster the year that he got injured. And I know you're giving me that face, but I really think Hebe could step up to the plate. Not saying we shouldn't get more depth. Not saying, hey, let's, right? We've been hearing tons of rumors recently about the Colombian that might get picked up. Um, another, a bunch of other players that are affiliated with the team currently. Uh, but I really think Hebe could step up to the plate. What do you guys think? I mean, your face tells me absolutely well, not. But he was also the person who said that Hebel will never get another goal, and he's been very wrong on that. I was that, wrong so. five times on that because he scored five <laughs> times this season. Um, I would love – listen, I thought the one time we had him in the post-conference, he was like super nice guy. He seems like a really, really good person, a good teammate. I want him to succeed. I want him to be amazing. I, I want him to be, you know, 100% after the injuries and everything, just be the best he can. I do. But I still think even if he is very serviceable, he's still going to need time. He's still going to need uh, another forward. We need another forward on the team. I I would like a big name. I would like a big player to come in, you know, to, to compete with. But we don't have depth, you know, at, at, a, at a striker position. Yeah. Well, we, what about Talis Magno? Can Talis Magno fill that spot? I think he's more of a playmaker. You know, Talis can score, but Talis with the ball makes our team better. Yeah. You know, the the, the reason Tati, I, although, and I want to say, I know we just mentioned it briefly with Felix, that pass by Santi. Oh, beautiful. Oh, my in God. In slow motion, when you watch it and he's looking down on it and he lobs it. I mean, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. So I want to give him credit for that. But back to Talis. This was the pass. Beautiful. Look at this. I mean. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amazing! It was really just a a, a really a, a piece of art, man. That that he made that pass and that kick by Dati was amazing too. Yeah, though. he used the outside of the yeah, foot and yeah, he got it perfect. Beautiful. We didn't even get to talk about Dati's uh, bicycle kick that almost went. Oh, that was Whoa. on target, oh, on target. Beautiful. So I think that our team does better when Talis is not trying to score the goal. Let Talis let the the defense collapse on him, mm-hmm. and he's gonna find the open man. He mm-hmm. could do. I do believe he could do anything. He could do that. But I think we're going to lose something in the midfield, and we're going to lose the possession that we, you know, prim- primarily have. I think in big part to him. Yeah, agreed. I agree. No, I agree. And he's not a great finisher right now, Tal. Not Magno. yet. So not I yet. think. So I think putting him as striker now, right after Saturday, right. Um, not a great idea. I think give Hebe a chance, right? And then, uh, and then we'll see later. Yeah. Do I'm we, all, do all we see a lot of a lot more of Tiago now? Because now we have some. Have bed moves. Uh, I guess no, not really. You no, still have we need more Bayonetta yeah. out there. That's what yeah, we need. Love Bede, uh, I like GP. Uh, Bayonetta's all beast, yeah. my guy. GP is uh, legit. When I didn't see him on Saturday, I was really a uh, Sunday. What was that? Red Bull game Sunday or Saturday? Sunday. Sunday. I uh, I was a little sad. I gotta say, I wanted him out there, but you know what? We got the win. So yeah, I don't matter. care. I don't it care who matter. we would have played that day, and it was great to see. Hack getting more and more oh, minutes. Did, like, oh, remember talk, that little hack? Has we, he, he, we still wanted to talk more Red Bull. Oh That's our issue, God, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. That, 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 sh- if he didn't just shoot it immediately. Yeah, he took no, a little too much I, to prepare. I mean, it. I would have kind of wanted to prepare too. He set himself up for it, gave himself a little pass, and then boom. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then who messed up the shot right after? Somebody else had the shot. No, there oh, was... hey, there. You're. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> He kicked it to the moon. Hey, uh, Hebed's back. Bro. Yeah, okay, yeah he's right. back. He got no choice. Right. He's got to be back. And Maxi had the header. We, we could have won that game oh 3-0. It's so crazy. The 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 halves were just so different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, after the Red Bulls got tired and after that, they subbed out that dude. Um, I think it was Omir. Omir oh. Guadalupe. Okay. For, uh, Fernandez, when they took him Fernandez out, put in Tom Barlow. Yeah. 
Oh my game god, changed. the whole game was completely yeah. different. After we were that. talking to um, the hooligan guys the hooligans in the about bathroom. Them. That's the right time to talk uh, Listen, football. The hooligans or the cooligans? The cooligans. Oh my bad. <laughs> the cooligans. <laughs> you know? The cool in the bathroom. Yeah. For like five minutes. Listen, about we got to pee. What are we gonna do? Got to <laughs> pee. Got to pee. Um, uh, but but yes, I, I I did disagree with Cushing, where in the post match uh, interview he said. You know, we could have won three nothing. We could have won three nothing. We could have also gave up two goals in the first half. Yeah, Sean That's Johnson true. was amazing. Yeah, Sean John. Sean yeah, Johnson big time. Really well. Yeah, agreed. Hope we stop doubting him, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> Team USA. I, you know what? I forgot to ask Felix that I'm going to ask you guys. We've had this big game. I've been on the cushion in vote. I want. I don't want cushion. Any, I. I think I've already made my, my decision. Cushion does not need to be an interim head coach. And cushion is the head coach. If I find out that he lied to me and told me that Tati had an injury <laughs> and he knew that was not true, then no. Otherwise, well, I think they would have kept their their lips quiet about yeah, their very tight. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. His job to, to go on that. But do you guys think like do you feel good about him I coach think, now, I or think do you still need more time? I need more time. I agree. Let's wait a little more. Let's see what comes out of it. I'm cushioning. I'm pulling I, it early. I'm pushing in. Is that what the cushing term is? In. I did like. That's from the, I think the 90s pod guys oh, did the cushing in. I don't know. Oh, like cushing. Oh, whatever. Whatever. I'm in. I'm, uh, he's in. <laughs> well, I will say, though, he did do something, which is why he became my favorite coach. After Tati scored, he churned back. And I guess it was where um, a few of our players and, like, I guess – the big shots for NYCFC. He looked back oh. and he gave the like he had energy. Yeah, the fist yeah. point was great to see. That's like, what you wanted. Right? That's all I wanted. Yes, <laughs> I want. If if we're gonna lose, let's lose with passion. If we're gonna win, let's do everything with passion. And and I think he's starting to understand You're what Italian. we see. Passion. Yeah. <laughs> These are emotions here. All right, let's get into this NYCFC versus Inter Miami game. Uh, just because I think we all know this, uh, Inter Miami got smoked by FC Barcelona uh, just a couple of days ago. Embarrassing, zero six. I'm here saying, yeah, we can compete with some of the best, and then they go and play Inter Miami. Also, so, after some other team just lost, like last week to Chelsea or something like that. Oh, that was Charlotte, I believe. Uh, did they lose? Why? I yeah, didn't, I didn't yeah they did lose. Brussels Why do these scrubs keep playing these European teams? Why don't we get NYCFC to play a European team? So aren't they going to play one this year? Not that I know uh, of. But I, I, before we get into Inter Miami, a quick, not very quick discussion. Um, Do we think playing these teams from these other countries and getting smoked by them, but we're not playing all our starters. We know we're not playing all our guys. Is it is a bad look for the league? Yeah, yeah, it is getting smoked. Yeah, <laughs> but they're even not even if, playing even their if starters either, and yeah, they're yeah. also getting. Uh, we're also getting. But do smoked. we know? I don't know. If Barcelona was playing their starters. No, they were no, not. They no, were no, not. no. They, 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 it, it would be twenty nothing, guys. It's like <laughs> th this is what I'm saying. I think that it's like a, it's like a, a little backup. Oh, we didn't play our star. Play your starters. We're yeah. still gonna get smoked. I mean, no, but you. Should, what I'm saying is, Inter Miami. Well, they played what Wednesday, Tuesday? No, they played Tuesday because I think it was yesterday. You have a game against NYCFC on Saturday. So they're not going to play their starters. And I think you have these meaningless meaningless games in the middle of the season, and these guys don't want to play their best players. But we want to show that MLS is a serious league. So I think you you got to make these games more important somehow. I don't know how you do it, but if this game matters more, if there's money involved somehow, then, these, then we'll see actual starters. We'll see, I think, more of a competitive game. Yeah, I like when they do it in the offseason. Right? Well, they technically did in the European offseason, just not the MLS That's a good point, season. actually. That's a that's a problem in doing it, right? Because yeah. we're going to be in season when uh, they're off, true. when they're on, we're off. Yeah. But, you know, I do I do want that that big stage, right, where we, we, we hold our own. I just don't think we as a league are there yet. I mean, we're talking about the – if we're talking about, you know – the second league or the, you know, uh, you know, the, not the premier league for maybe we put up, but these teams have all the talent. I mean, some of those players cost more than our entire salary combined. Chill out, man. I think, I think MLS <laughs> has, has better talent than I think right now there's just a bad reputation. Yes. They lost to inter Miami zero six, but inter Miami could lose zero six to any team. Why do we keep seeing yeah, zero six? It's six nil. All right, it doesn't matter. They, they got smoked. <laughs> yeah, uh, to to credit that Inter Miami is not the best team. I think yeah. they're they're what, what are they in the standings? I heard they're twentieth overall, and just between all MLS teams, they ranked almost like ninth or tenth in they the Eastern Conference. Points. They're seven, four, and nine. Didn't you say Charlotte got smoked by Chelsea? 
Well, Danny said that. I didn't oh. see the final stats. And Danny talks sometimes crazy. So. I do talk crazy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so keys to winning this game. Tati needs to score. <laughs> I don't think there's any way we can lose this game, guys. I don't think so. It's either. Tati's last game. It's in Yankee Stadium. Wait, no. so I'm confused. Is there going to be a ring ceremony? There's going to be a ring. Well, they're, they're definitely giving out rings. Uh, to oh. the season ticket holders at four, yeah. but I think there is a, also a ring ceremony. Yeah, right there before is. The there game. is. Okay, one thing I would say though, let's learn from the Red Bulls. If you're gonna have the ring ceremony, do it before the game. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, after the game at Red Bull Arena, they had like a Legends Night for Luis Robles. Yes, and uh, it was terrible because they lost and everybody was miserable. That <laughs> yeah. uh, was such a bad so, idea. So ring they- championship ring before the game, please. Yes, yeah. before the game. And there was that really good offer that we got for like just a measly like seven hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> you get to have a, uh, oh. a dinner. And yeah. uh, you get to uh, sit down and, and mingle with the players, which yeah. we found out all we have to do is go into the parking lot after a game. <laughs> and we could also mingle with <laughs> yeah, the players. It turns out the New Jersey Red Bulls can't afford private parking. Unbelievable. So you see Tati, Santi, Gray all walking into the parking lot that we're all parked at. Yeah, that's crazy. It was insane. Yeah. Uh, do better, New Jersey. Please. Um, anything else we need to talk about with Inter Miami? Uh, I know we get into the starting eleven. Tati's on the starting eleven. I just feel like the highlight is start uh, Tati. I think I think just one thing. I heard Chano got injured during practice. Oh wow! Uh, so Tiago Martins is going to start, and uh, Tinner Holmes still out. So Gray's going to play. I got I got to tell you, I think mm. Martins is starting no yeah, matter what now. I know. Oh, that's funny because that's what I was saying. And you guys were like, <laughs> yeah, blah, 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 well, blah, I didn't blah, say blah, I wanted that. No, no. Okay, fine. This guy, all of a sudden, yeah, credit. Yeah, Chicago Martins been playing. He's stepped up, man. man. He's stepped up. And, but now, you know, I was talking to Trey from Blue Balls about this. Now that contract looks really bad. That extension. Yeah. Which, you know, if he's, where's he going to play? No. He's not going to replace well, Callens. Well, we always need more center backs. Yeah, you know? yes, I mean, these right. guys are yeah. always getting banged up. You're going to be tired with all these games on a like so close to each other. So I think it's still very beneficial to have Chanel. Yeah, especially if we're, if this Apple contract's what it is, and it's every Saturday and Wednesday. That's a gruesome schedule, especially when you're flying. Well, mostly country I sometimes. think all of them will be Saturday, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, point is the schedule is going to be brutal. Uh, as you know, one person. I mean, he was out for four or five weeks. Just a few, just a couple weeks ago. Well, Martin's. both of them were hurt, hurt at separate points. So, like, I think the depth doesn't hurt at all. Okay. I don't think that extension is bad at all. Maybe we should get some depth at uh, forward then, right? We have <laughs> all those games. Betting with Buzz. Let's go, Buzz. All right, Buzz, what you got for us this week? Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get a little risky this week. We're gonna do first of all, we're negative two eighty to win. Which has been the biggest it's been in a while. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's going to smoke them. It, well, I think it's like the hype, though. We got to be cautious here. I think it's Tati's last game. The betters are like, oh, everybody's so passionate about this. Yeah. <laughs> they want this win. Well, it's negative 280 for a reason because I'm agreeing with Danny Ooh. on this one. This is going to be a whooping. All right. This is going to be, I think we give them like a mercy goal. All right. So <laughs> take the two, it, it's 550 plus 550 for Inter Miami, which I don't think anybody's going to put money on that. Uh, and then plus 380 for the draw. So it's going to be heavy wood here. We're laying 280, but take it. It's a lock. That's like the, the lock of the, the century. Then, of course, we're going to beat them like 4 nothing, maybe 5 nothing. So then we're going to go uh, the two and a half goals, which is minus one. Seven. And that's expensive. Yeah, that's yeah, expensive. It's very expensive. expensive. All right. Yeah. Have. It should be even money, really. Yeah, it, well, that's what the line's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah to, to get it on both sides. We know Sean Johnson's not going to give up a goal. So now that means we have to score at least three. We'll do a Tati might have three. Okay. <laughs> and then I want the Tati goal anytime. Yes. I think that's going to be a good one. I think it's happening. Okay. Like it, I don't care what it's going to take. <laughs> he might like cross over the whole thing. I don't know. <laughs> but take that and you'll feel so good when he ends his career with a goal, with a W. And a fitting way for him to leave. You know what I would really love? I know it's not possible. Well, maybe it is. That these scores four goals this game, wins golden boot while not on the lead. That would be, I think that would be amazing. That would be, ridiculous, bro. that would be insane. But it would be great if he won the golden boot in like half the year. Yo, yeah. so who's taking Thoughty's all-star spot? Hey, <laughs> what <laughs> is he saying? All right, you're done. Dallas. <laughs> All right, final prediction time. What is the final score, guys? I know we've already been talking about a beat, and so... I already gave mine. 4 nothing. good guys. 3-1. 
Let's go, boys. Uh, I go two nothing. They they win. Tati scores one. We need it from Tati. I love you, Tati. <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> Please don't go, Tati. Guys, if you like the channel, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, any final words? Um, yeah, it was great having Felix on the show, guys. Like yes. first guest. Hopefully, more guests to come. Uh, we sloppy. gotta do this more often. We'll get better with it, guys. We'll get better with it. Appreciate the patience. Appreciate all of our views have been increasing quite a bit. Um, so I'm just excited, man. I was also excited how we keep meeting more and more people, like post games, yeah. at the games. It's nice to see people like knowledge what we're doing. Yeah, saying you know positive things about us. Reach out to some of those kids, right? Yeah, we got some kids to follow get us. The kids, yeah. get them when they're young. Get them young. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, thank you everybody for the support. And uh, thanks, Felix. Later, y'all. See you Peace. guys. Peace. Peace.